And if you threw a party, invited everyone you knew, you would see the biggest gift was from me, and the card attached would say, boom, 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 thank you for being a friend. Oh my God, we're talking about the Golden Girls. You've got Rue Callahan, you've got B. Arthur, you've got Betty White, absolutely veteran ladies, killers, who had honed their craft for so long on so many shows and came together to produce this show, The Golden Girls. Every beat is freaking perfect, man. I feel like I'm giving short shrift to Estelle Getty. Well? Wouldn't it be easier to put a pillow over my face while I sleep? Uh, actually, young, a year younger. Uh, was by far the least experienced of the cast. Had to do a lot of work to get into makeup. And apparently, after collecting paychecks on this show for a little while, had a bit of work done, had to spend a little bit more time getting into makeup to play the oldest lady in the cast. Golden Girls ran from 1985 to 1982. Uh, 1992, because it didn't go backwards in time. That would be crazy. It centers on the lives and, uh, and the sex lives, if I may say so. Condoms, Rose! Condoms! 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 Four elder women enjoying their golden years in a beautiful home in the suburbs of Miami. Uh, I think they live in the Shady Pines retirement community, if I'm not mistaken. The Shady Pines, correct? I nailed it! Why do I love Golden Girls so much? Well, first off, it's an incredible show. Secondly, it is one of four shows that I watched a hell of a lot of with my grandmother, whom I was very close to. Uh, Golden Girls, Columbo, Murder, She Wrote, Magnum P.I., my grandmother's favorite show. The show was way ahead of its time in terms of LGBT issues. Why do men have nipples? <laughs> I have no idea. You think it's because God has a sense of humor and isn't as uptight as the rest of us? <laughs> it's easier for you to say that, Sophia. It's not your brother who's getting married to a man. Uh, there was a number of side characters who were both gay and lesbian, uh, and the show treated them with utmost respect, which was usually to the surprise of other characters on the show. It's kind of the point. Oh, look, I can accept the fact that he's gay, but... Why does he have to slip a ring on this guy's finger so the whole world will know? Why did you marry George? We loved each other. We wanted to make a lifetime commitment. Wanted everybody to know. That's what Doug and Clayton want, too. Everyone wants someone to grow old with. And shouldn't everyone have that chance? Uh, and so I think that's part of the reason why it is such a stalwart favorite of the gay community. Uh, that, or maybe it was uh, shoulder pads, I'm not really sure. Uh, they were also way ahead of their time uh, as far as the country, the mainstream, and the White House is concerned uh, with regarding the AIDS epidemic. Rose gets a blood transfusion in a particular episode, I forget the name of it, but Edit Greg is going to help me out with that. Feels like she's being punished by God, which of course is an absurd position for her character to take anyway, but it was one which they needed, the writers needed her to take to mirror the public discourse so that, of course, Blanche, played by Rue Callahan, could set her straight. Damn it, why is this happening to me? I mean, this isn't supposed to happen to people like me. You must have gone to bed with hundreds of men. <laughs> All I had was one innocent operation. Hey, wait a minute. Are you saying this should be me and not you? No, no, I'm just saying that I am a good person. <laughs> Hell, I'm a goody two-shoes. AIDS is not a bad person's disease, Rose. It is not God punishing people for their sins. And, you know, 72 hours passed, she got tested, and they didn't give her AIDS because it was a 28-minute sitcom on NBC. But they did talk about it, and they addressed it in a very frank way and I think they deserve full credit for that. Now Blanche liked to spend her time, when she had it, down at a little bar called the Rusty Anchor. You're going to introduce me to some of your friends? Yes, if I see anybody I know. Blanche! Hey, Blanche, how's life? Well, 
It's a dog eat dog world, and I'm wearing no underwear. <laughs> uh, Blanche, I think in one episode, famously was kicked out of the bar for mixing a margarita in a sailor's mouth, which, um, I mean, I would volunteer. Anyway, we're gonna make a drink. I call the rusty anchor, and it, it's a variation on a rusty nail. Uh, it seems like it's self-evident, it has to be. Rusty nails are typically built in the glass they're drunk from, that is the way to do. So we're gonna start by cracking ice into our glass. Thank you for being a friend, for going down the road and back again. And if you threw a party... Oh wait, no. You're a true friend. You're a pal and a confidant. It's probably Reba McIntyre's best hit. That's gotta be a Reba song, right? I want a half an ounce of lemon juice. Half an ounce of lemon juice? Why am I wearing a Hawaiian shirt in this episode? Because we're in Miami. I need one ounce of Drambuie. I only have these tiny bottles, but I have more than one of them. Drambuie is a liqueur made from scotch. And just to answer the question I know I will inevitably get, no, there is no substitution for Drambuie. It is what it is. It is Drambuie. <laughs> the rusty nail kind of turns on Drambuie. That is its thing that distinguishes it. A rusty nail is nothing more than this and scotch. Uh, so if we're gonna do a rusty nail variation, Drambuie is a necessity. And now I want two ounces of gin, a London dry gin. When I was working on this drink, I had the idea that, well, it's gotta be sort of the nautical answer to a rusty nail. And when I think nautical, I think of two things. I think of gin and rum. I worked on a rum version. I didn't like as much as the gin version. So the gin won the day. Give it a little stir. delicious. But we're missing something. We need to now add kind of a float, kind of a float, of four to six dashes of Angostura bitters. It really makes us drink. Just dash it across the top so that it all hangs out up there and sinks down. I've gone to like 30 dashes of Angostura bitters. I really like Angostura and it's gonna migrate its way down. That's your rust in the rusty anchor. And there we have a rusty anchor, a drink I created to honor the Golden Girls. Um, my notes tell me that I'm not gonna garnish this, but that I should serve it with a side of cheesecake. Uh, so here we go. Cheesecake and a rusty anchor. Holy goddamn hell, that is delicious. Oh my God, that is so good. Oh, I love it. Let's do that again. Let's talk about what this actually tastes like. Cinnamon and sweet gives way to juniper from the London Dry and like a citrus notes, lemon juice and the, I think some kind of a bitter orange thing that's present in the London Dry gin, the, uh, the Fords. The Angostura God, that's good. Now the Drambui is um, this sweet, but sophisticated, spicy, but not like hot spicy, but like cinnamon, nutmeg spicy kind of a thing. The foundation of this drink, you get that throughout, uh, kind of accentuated by those London dry juniper or citrus notes, which is kind of punched in the face by the Angostura bitters notes, the gentian and the cinnamon and the, uh, I don't even, you know, nobody, I don't know what's in Angostura bitters. And I'm just gonna say it, it goes so good with cheesecake. It really does. Something about that it has a hell of a combination of flavors. I never, I haven't, my, I decided I would have this with a cheesecake, but I hadn't tried it until just now. The citrus, bitter, semi-sweet thing that's going on here contrasts with the cheesecake so well. These are actually 
a miraculous flavor combination. <laughs> um, I strongly encourage you to enjoy a cheesecake with a rusty anchor the next opportunity that you have to do so. Uh, of course, the Golden Girls spent six or seven seasons eating cheesecake around their kitchen table. Uh, about 300 cheesecakes in total, if I'm not mistaken. B. Arthur despised cheesecake, uh, for she has no soul. It's tr real acting when every time she takes a bite and says, mmm, this cheesecake is so good. I don't understand how you could struggle with that. I think she has the audacity to call herself a New Yorker, and yet she dislikes cheesecake. I don't... You know the Golden Girls went to Disney World in 1986 or whatever? They did like a Disney World visit special. It was like two hours long. They, got, they wound up there in a hot air balloon by accident. Let me just leave you with this old saying from my hometown of St. Olaf. Hurley flirten, 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 or flirten, 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 flirten,